So when you program a part like this brake rotor, you have a lot of tools that go into it. You got OD tools, drills, boring bars, groovers. Even building out a tool library can be tough because defining all those tools takes time. And it's very time consuming when you're having to put those tools in one by one into MasterCAD. Today I'm gonna to show you a very useful trick by using Kenna Metal's Novo catalog, which I already used to build a tool list before I even start the job. We're gonna use Kenna Metal's Novo to grab 3D models of our tools and put them directly into MasterCAM so we can define our tool library easily. So let's head over to the programming room and get started. So just as an example, I have the brake rotor that we did not too long ago. And if I open up my browser right now, I have Novo already loaded with the tool list that I used. So what I do is I build out all the tools that I use in Novo. And if there's any special extensions or adapters, I'll include that inside the tool list. So you can see as an example, I've got tool number one here, which is the CNGA 434. That was the OD rougher that I used with the ceramic insert. So you can see I've got the insert here, the actual tool holder. And then I also have the adapter that I use to connect this tool to the upper spindle. So if I wanna take this tool into MasterCAM, I'm just gonna click this checkbox over here for the whole assembly. And then I'm gonna say download model. And what I want is the 3D rendered model as a step file. And then it'll go ahead and download that step file, which I can open up in either SolidWorks or MasterCAM. Now I'm gonna go into the Lathe Tool Manager and Utilities. And normally I'd have a tool library that I already use for the SMX3100, but this is just the default library that opens up for the mill turn. And just for an example on how to make a tool, I'm just gonna create one up here. So the upper portion of this, this is just the tools that are using in our current program. And then on the bottom here, you have tools that you can save to a tool library. So just for an example, I'm gonna create a tool for just for this program, and we're gonna say create 3D tool. This will open up the tool designer in MasterCAM. So you can create a tool. I'm just gonna leave it the default name since this is just an example. You can give it what tool station and tool number you want it, what kind of tool you want. Just gonna say general turning. And then over here, we have our tool assembly page, which is where we're gonna create our tool. Now we'll say define a component. I'm gonna start off by saying that this tool that we're creating, we're gonna start with the adapter and then select model. I've got our KM50 CNGA selected here. And I'm gonna double click that. And this is our whole assembly that we downloaded from Novo. So I'm gonna start off by selecting just the adapter. So this is the adapter that goes into the upper spindle. And I'm gonna select all components to it. So I have the body and the screw, the set screw here. I'm just gonna select all of that. You can see it, grab the model of it. It didn't grab the internals, which I'm fine with. We're gonna have a tool head over that, so that's not too important. What I want is the shape of the tool so that I can tell MasterCAM where it's gonna be connecting into the spindle and where the head of the tool is gonna to go into this adapter. On this component page, you can give it a name to organize your adapters. You can tell it what shank size it is. So I'm gonna select cylindrical shank. And then I'm gonna click on the select diameter button and click the OD of the adapter and it'll import the size into that dialog box. And then it'll grab the diameter and put it into that box there. And then we're gonna to go to the next page, which is our connections. I need to tell it a machine side connection. So this is where it's going to be against the machine. This is where it's going into the top spindle. I'm gonna say select plane. And then I'm gonna select the bottom flat over here and say that's my plane. It brings up an axis gnomon here where you can adjust the position of the plane, but I'm gonna leave it where it is centered to the part. And I'm gonna hit enter and then that's set. Next, I'm gonna give it a workpiece connection. This is where our tool is actually gonna to connect to this adapter. And for this connection, same deal, I'm gonna select a plane for this connection. And we're gonna say the front face of the adapter. Once again, you can adjust the plane and the center position of this. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna hit enter and then hit okay. And then I'm gonna hit okay one more time. So that gives it our adapter. Next, we're gonna import the head. So define component. This is the tool holder. We'll select our model again. I'm gonna open up the same file. You can see our assembly opens up in here. And then now I'm gonna select the tool head. Select all components for it. The only thing I'm not gonna select is the insert. But I am gonna grab the small shim that this insert sits on. And we're gonna hit enter. And you can see I've got the holder here with everything except the insert there. Same deal, you can put in the name of the holder, give it any information you need to sort this holder. I'm gonna give it a shank size, so 
Once again, we're going to grab the diameter of the OD here. And then for a machine side connection, we're going to select where we want this tool to connect to our adapter. So I'm going to select this face right there. Hit enter for the axis adjustment. Now you can see our holder shows up with our tool attached to the adapter. So we got a good connection and we're going to hit OK. And now finally, we're going to add the insert. This is going to be the most involved part of making the tool because now we're going to have to tell it how the tool is cutting and what orientation this tool needs to be inside of the machine. It's the same deal. I'm going to open up our same assembly. This time, I'm just going to select the insert. You can give it names if you want. For the cutting side, I'm going to tell it that this is a right hand tool. And then for the cutting definition, I need to give it a corner radius of the tool. Now for this, I'm just going to go up to the tool and I'm going to grab the nose radius of the insert. And then it pulls up the corner radius of 62 thousandths and 5 tenths. You can set your tool offset numbers if you want. And then for the third portion, you have options to align the insert and move it so you can fit it perfectly into your holder. What I find is if I grab the whole assembly from Novo, when I import it, by selecting the whole assembly and just grabbing the component that I want, it should all be aligned together. So I don't normally have to adjust any of the positions of the inserts. But if you were grabbing a different insert or you know, if you had your components separate, you might need to align the tools. By doing this, you can select what face you want your insert to align to, or you can just put a gnomon on the insert and drag it to your holder and align it how you want it. You have multiple options of doing that, but the way I'm showing, most of the time, I don't need to mess with that. The next button, we have our setup tab, and now we're gonna select the cutting plane of the insert. Now the easiest way that I've found to set up the cutting plane on these KM50 holders is by going here to select plane and then the KM50 has a flat here on the holder. So on this little circular bit, there's a flat. I select that and you can see it creates an outline of my tool as if it was facing down onto that plane. You can also see I have the direction that that insert's sitting. So it says insert up direction there. I wanna make sure that that's pointed the direction that the insert's facing up. So right now this plane is off, it's above the insert. So to adjust that, I go to this offset portion here and click select offset. And then what I want is the very tip of this insert and right in the center, we'll click that. And you can see it's right on the center of the tool and it's lined up with the tip of my insert. If I go to the right view, you can see I'm dead center on the holder and I'm lined up with the tip of the insert. Now, if you're creating a stick tool, which is very common on a lathe, you can see Mastercam gives you a really good example on where to set your plane there. So it'll be a very similar process by selecting the shank of the tool. But for KM50 tools, this is a really easy way to set this up. Next, we have our boundary. So if you selected your plane properly and your insert seating right, you should have a boundary result of defined. So that tells us we're good there. And now we have our actual machining orientation options. So this is the real meat of it. I wanna look at it from the top plane. And then I wanna align this tool exactly how I would align it as if I was touching it off in the machine. You can treat this view here as if you were looking down on the tool probe. So what I want to do is I want to set this up as if I was going to touch off this tool onto the tool probe in the machine. So for the upper spindle, whenever I touch off a tool on it, I have the tool mounted horizontally. So I'm going to select the orientation as horizontal, select top turret. We're going to be using the left spindle as the default spindle, so that's fine. And for the spindle rotation, I'm going to set it to clockwise because if I were to cut with this tool mounted in this position, this is the direction that that spindle will be turning. So for spindle rotation, that's the spindle rotation that this tool will be using if I were to cut in this position. Now normally when I run this tool in the SMX 3100, I usually run this tool vertically. I have the machine rotate this tool into position and move the head vertical. I need to set this tool up this way in the settings because this is how I touch off the tool in the machine. When I tell Mastercam to adjust the tool angle and to rotate the head, it'll take that all into account and make sure that my spindle is properly spinning the right way as long as I have this set up right. Clockwise, you can see that's spinning into the insert. That's what we want. And finally, we have our compensation options. So to find the tool center, the easiest way that I found for the CN inserts to set this up is to use the second option here, which you can see we have an example with a similar shape insert. 
we'll grab the two lines for each of these angles and then it'll create a circle there for the radius and it'll line it up properly on your axis here. For the quadrant selection, you have different positions and the easiest way for me to remember this is where I'm touching it off on the tool probe. So if the tool was mounted this way, I'd be touching off to the top of the probe and that's quadrant one. You can adjust your plunge and cut directions here. I'm fine with the defined setting here. And then for the tool clearance, you have your side clearance angles and your height and your in clearance angles and your width. Once again, easiest way to do this, look at the examples that Mastercam gives you. So we got our side clearance height. We're gonna grab the bottom angle there and we're just gonna grab it by selecting a line. Select the bottom angle line there, gives us a length. You can see it pulls up the angle. And then for the height, for the CN inserts, I grab an arc and a point. So for the arc, we grab the nose radius, and for the point, I grab the center of this little corner there, and that'll give me my height length. Same deal with the other side. We're gonna grab the angle on the side there, puts it in automatically, and then for the width, same deal, grab the nose radius and grab the center point of that corner. We'll hit okay, and that's it. We created our tool. Now, if I wanted to, I could create a tool library for this tool. I'll just call this tutorial. And then I can take this tool and copy it by clicking this bottom button here. And this will add it to the tool library. We'll hit okay and we'll say, save that tool. And then if I was to program this part, I just make a face pass here, grab our tool, tell it our tool angle. We're gonna go 90 degrees on the tool, point it vertical, rotate the tool 180 degrees so my insert is facing the part. And then I'm not gonna bother with any of the parameters because it's just an example, as you can see, got our tool. And then this way, you can see any clearances that you might need to worry about with the tool. So you can see I've got the shape of the tool perfectly there. So. so it's a very big help when you're programming on the nine axis. You can see I might actually crash the machine if I was to use the default settings for the face pass. So that's exactly why you want the 3D tool to show up in Mastercam. In this case, what I did for the brake rotor was I made sure not to go all the way down to center line because I was worried about that. So that was just one example on how to grab a tool from Novo and import it into Mastercam. Like I said, I like having the exact shape of the tool. So that way, if I'm programming in Mastercam and simulating my project, I can see exactly how that tool is gonna to be cutting. And if there's anything I need to watch out for, Mastercam will let me know on that tool. And it's very useful that it's really easy to grab any tool model that you need from Novo. Kenametal has that all there. And grab any tool from Kenametal and have the step file for that tool so you can see exactly what tool you're using and have that geometry in Mastercam. So it's very good that Kenametal has an easy way of getting you the model for your tool. So I hope this was helpful, especially if you don't know how to make 3D tools in Mastercam. For the longest time, I stuck with 2D tools because that was what I was familiar with when I used to use Mastercam back in the production days. So this is very useful information, I think. And thank you very much for watching. If you like what we do and you like our channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.